Average FPS can be a lie. Even one person lows can be a lie, unless you know exactly how they calculate it. If you are a YouTuber or a viewer or just a gamer trying to understand performance, this video will enlighten you and might completely change how you look at benchmarks. For the CS2 players, this video will finally end the reflex versus no reflex saga. I'm glad I can finally put this inside the coffin. If you watched my previous video, I said that the craft frame mix data is not bugged, but it is calculating very different things. If some of you noticed these benchmarks, you should have already been alarmed as to how come one setting is giving you such better one person lows. In all my videos, I said I do not use it. Because I really felt in game this weird feeling of input lag and I knew that wouldn't be the case with such good one person lows. So I went into some deep research reading into the code, the raw files until I found the answer. I can finally say I've always advocated to keep reflex enabled, despite the so called one person low increase. Now I understand why the community bought into this because who wouldn't trust Caffrey Max? Even I did. But a change in particular variables can cause results that are downright wrong. Not in terms of what we are measuring, but what we think we are measuring. Caffrey Max uses an underlying technology by Intel called Presentmon, and this is where we must dive our heads into. Now let's talk all about that just after Skins Monkey, who decided to sponsor this video. So check out Skins Monkey, the trusted automated CS2 trading site. Swap the skins you don't want for the ones you do. Use their handy filters to find the perfect fit. And if you're a little shy on funds, you can deposit with tons of options and get up to 35% extra bonus if you use my code COOK. Side offers live support 24 7. You can also claim up to free $5 using my code or by clicking the link in the description. Presentmon is an open source metric technology made by Intel. It allows you to get data from very specific activities carried out during a render. Caframex uses this technology for its data. Sadly, it uses an outdated version. If you were to download a better version from their GitHub page, you would be using more current versions of Presentmon, which is good. Now, so are these the results of a bug being fixed? Um, you can say so. But these are also improvements to quantify visual changes. If I simulate both these programs and pass the JSON files, I'm able to see how we can get two completely different values. Let me explain it as simply as I can, and I promise you I'm generalizing quite a lot here. So what is frame time? In 2.2, we see frame time is nothing but the present call and the next following present call. The time duration between it, the interval, is what we'd call our frame time. Well, this is not really a bad concept in its own. In 2.31, we also have the same logic to measure it. We have the same logic to measure the one person lows, but we also have an alternate logic which works better when reflex is disabled and there's some sort of thing which is kind of removing the jitteriness during our present calls because this can really artificially inflate our numbers. This is what 2.3 does. Not only does it improve upon that, but it also gives us much more visual numbers like things which we are actually going to see and notice. So what does this really mean when it comes to the benchmarks? Well, let's go over there as well. So I carried out all the benchmarks that we had to and I kind of noticed that now the values from the FPS benchmark map, well, they were kind of closely corresponding to the newer version as well. So let's have a look at the main comparisons, which is 2.2 versus 2.3. At boost, we see again, not much change, but you can see that 2.3 performance reports are a little worse than 2.2 because it is accommodating the whole pipeline. So even if the whole logic kind of remained the same, it would still lead to little less performance. But true performance. With no reflex, we see that everything still seems the same. And suddenly, we're able to detect our bug. When we cap our frame rate, the present call is performing very abnormally, to say the least. Do you even believe that this could have been possible? 
I'm finally happy we kind of solved this mystery because just look at the difference in these numbers. It can be so, so misleading. This is why I think it's so important for us to go a little bit more deeper into topics and analyze how just changing a setting, setting correlation to causation is not important. We should highlight which software you're using, which version of the software we're using, and what we're calculating because the one person lows can mean two different things in the same software in some different year. So make your purchase choices quite wisely. Now, when it comes to reflex, just keep that enabled. There is no real 1% low increase when it comes to no reflex and capping your frame rate. Now, when it comes to the perceivement of smoothness, many people say that they felt it's smooth. It's not because your 1% lows increase. You can see the FPS drops are pretty much identical. On the left, we are running completely uncapped and on the right, we're running with a frame cap of 143 FPS. One thing that is true though, is that your frame drops probably won't feel as bad when a frame cap is enabled since your FPS will be dropping a shorter distance. These were the video settings used for the benchmarks. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Oh, I have a bombshell, which is that uh, the whole frame times thing. It's all garbage. It's all wrong. It's all garbage.